If you enjoy this program, please like and subscribe. The church is attacking the Jewish faith. They're trying to convert the Jews to Christianity. I have to respond. Some people think I shouldn't. Some people think that let him go, who needs him? The Jew wants to become a Christian, they're losers, we don't need him. I say not one soul. I want them all back, they're mine. Call you all live on the air. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Uh, good morning. This is Jay from Kansas City again. Uh, glad to see you're still doing well, Rabbi. My question this morning is, uh, you, you've said several times in the past that Christianity uh, relies on Judaism being true in order to be true. Uh, the same is, of course, not true, vice versa. Uh, so what would you say to a Christian who, in the course of watching you, falls away from their faith in the New Testament, why they should still believe in the Tanakh? Because for most Christians that I know, um, their belief in the Tanakh comes as a result of their faith in the New Testament. You now, they're not, they weren't Jewish first and became Christians. They've just been Christians this whole time. So why should they then uh, believe in the first two-thirds of their Bible when they really only believe in it because of the final third of their Bible? I don't normally talk about this, but I will today. So I, I took a walk in Jerusalem today. Just a number of people came over to me at different stages and introduced themselves to me. And they looked like completely Orthodox Jews and told me that they were at one time a, a Christian. They were a Jew who became Messianic and now religious Jew. One sweetie pie came over to me who, if you're watching this, you made, you made me smile. But I imagine he's on his way to the airport. He just converted to the Jewish faith. And he's on his he's flying out tonight to the United States. He just did his conversion. I got the biggest hug. That was nice. And he said they'll come back. Uh I asked him when he come back and he said I think he said uh, around March. So what happens is people who are studying with me, I don't let them become atheists. I mean, why, why take a Christian and make them an atheist? I mean, that, that's a nightmare, right? Yeah. So I can't, I don't, the vast majority of people who study with me and are affected by the Tanakh that's shared um, turn to the God of Israel. I think, I hope so, I hope so. I don't recall many people who came over to me who said I became an atheist. Does it mean that, I don't think so. The reason is that you guys who have been watching me for a while know what I'm up to. And that is, I, I use Christianity as a foil to reflect back the truth and beauty of the Jewish faith. I'm always doing that. Always. Oh, what's the point? I'm not. The church is attacking the Jewish faith. They're trying to convert the Jews to Christianity. I have to respond. Some people think I shouldn't. Some people think that let them go. Who needs them? The Jew wants to become a Christian. They're losers. We don't need them. I say not one soul. I want them all back. They're mine. And I want to persuade them by Tanakh, not by my communication skills, that they should renounce idolatry and come to the God of Israel. Absolutely, of course. But there are many people who reject Christianity because they reject the Christian God. They reject the notion that God would punish an innocent person for the bad behavior of wicked people. They apply the moral, the sense of justice that we all share. Look, I don't, I don't know what you think about, exactly what you think about the criminal justice system. I don't know if you believe in capital punishment, but I'm sure that you, you want um, guilty people punished and innocent people exonerated. I'm sure of that. I'm sure of that. I'm sure you don't want 
think that there's a single person in Rikers Island who's not committed a crime. And if you were to know that, it would break your heart. And you'd feel that in some measure, you're living in an unjust world. And what happens is people uh, who don't believe in God, the God that they don't believe in, I don't believe in either. But there was no Torah to capture them. To them, you're exactly right. They believe that the God of Christianity and the God of the children of Israel is the same. Why? Because the Christian Bible says so. So as a result, when they reject Christianity, they just reject it all. What a tragedy that is. If a person discovers that the core teachings of the church are inconsistent with their own sense of moral justice, there's a very strong possibility they will become atheists. Because they realize that what is Jesus? He's, if you read the Gospels, it's miracle, 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 miracle. And that's what you should be impressed with. And that's why it's very attractive, very attractive stuff. It's just completely inconsistent with Tanakh. Where Mashiach is not a miracle worker at all. He's a teacher. King David wasn't a miracle worker. Where in Tanakh do you find that David performed a miracle? Doesn't mean there were no people who performed miracles. Elisha, Elijah did. But that was not, Isaiah was not a miracle worker. He was not a walking around doing miracles. Jeremiah wasn't a miracle worker. Jeremiah was rescued from quicksand. A black slave saved him. That's what's going on. If somebody knows the real thing and then is introduced to Christianity, so immediately, that person will realize that this, the teachings of the church are completely, it's not that it's wrong or they're off. It's utterly incompatible with Tanakh. It's a different kind of book. Someone once asked me, what is the most compelling iteration of Christianity? And I said in a show, I don't know how long ago, that the Marcionites or the Gnostic Christians, they didn't believe in Tanakh. The Marcionites did not believe in the Hebrew Bible at all, neither the Gnostic Christians. So to them it was just, for Marcion it was only, the second, it's a second century iteration of Christianity. He only believed in the book of Luke and he thought the book of Luke as he saw it was a, had a lot of additions to it that was Jewish stuff, it didn't belong there. So that's what's happening. If you for Christians, it's conflated. They really don't know numbers. They just don't. The average Christian has a, is definitely familiar with the record of creation in the Torah, definitely familiar with the record of the flood, definitely of Abraham, definitely of Daniel in a den of lions. Definitely they know those stories. But that's it. That's what they know. They know there's a verse somewhere in Isaiah that says the Messiah is supposed to be divine, and it, that, that's all they know. So to them, they're not really studying the Hebrew Bible, and then, and then there are some who there are some Christians who do, but what they so what are Christians the Christians who are really studying Tanakh, who they raise as Christians and they go back and study Tanakh. So what happens is they've got to read Jesus into it. That's what happens to the more um, studious Christians. So the more studious Christians, what do they do? You'll hear this constantly. When you read a story in the Old Testament, it's really about Jesus, although not explicitly is there. So when Joseph is rejected by his brothers, that's really a story about Jesus. You will hear this ad nauseum. Really. Um, when Joshua encounters an angel in the fifth chapter of the book named after him, that angel really is Jesus. So Jesus is in all these stories, you see. So he's baked in. So every time people uh, are rejected, tonight, it's really a story about Jesus. And that's how they get around this. The problem with that sort of reasoning is, is it, it abandons the claim. The claim of the church, and you will know this, the claim of the church is not that there's some story in the Old Testament that seems to be a echo. This is what's called typology, a certain type of Jesus. 
That's not the claim. The claim is there are 365 prophecies in the Old Testament that explicitly foretell Jesus. No, there aren't. 365 times zero equals zero, nothing. That's really what's going on. That's why there's all this. There's a story in the Old Testament. It's really about Jesus. Why do they do that? Because if there was a verse in Tanakh that said there's one God and three persons and God's Son will be denied, if you believe me, you'll be saved, John 3, 16, John 14, 6, were in Tanakh, you think they'd be talking about Joseph? No. They would point to these verses that do not exist. They do exist in John. They do exist in Matthew, but they don't exist in Tanakh. That's what's really going on. And I hope that the people who study with me are turned to the God of Israel to the one God of Israel and renounce the illicit accretions of the church. Thank you for your question. If you enjoyed this program, please like and subscribe. Adon Olach Asher Malach V'terem Kol Yetzir Nivra Let Nasa בחף צוקו, אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא, ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו, ימלוך נועד.